Hey guys, this is Lior with Angle and Volkers. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the financial perspective of house hacking a two or three family in the greater Boston area. So if you're an aspiring investor or already in the game, you know, one of the biggest challenges typically for people, for real estate investors is coming up with that 25% down uh, payment on an investment property. So one of the greatest hacks that's really been uncovered the last number of years is to do something that's called house hacking, right? And that's basically where you buy a two or three family using an owner occupant loan, right? Which allows you to only put, which allows you to put down as little as three and a half to 5% when closing, which is awesome, right? I mean, you, you require way less cash, um, which is again, the biggest barrier, especially in an expensive market like the greater Boston area. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna kind of dive deep into the financial perspective of what it mean of, of house hacking and how to actually analyze, is this a good investment opportunity from a pure financial perspective, right? Uh, we're gonna look at the rents, we'll look at the, you know, we'll look at how to estimate uh, the typical expenses. Um, and that way you can kind of get a gut feeling of, does this property make sense for me or does it not? So let's dive right into it. All right, so what we're going to do to do this analysis, was, I'm actually just going to use my very first three family that I bought uh, using this uh, house hacking strategy. Um, I bought it in 2015 using a three and a half percent down loan. Um, but we're just going to pretend that I'm going to buy the property again today and we're going to run the numbers based on that. So what you want to do is first you're going to look at your uh, we're going to go through the whole analysis. So let's start first with the purchase assumptions, right? Let's say. Uh, we can get this property for about six hundred fifty thousand dollars. All right, uh, we're going to estimate our closing costs, right? Because we want to know exactly how much cash we're going to have to spend. Um, we're going to budget in ten thousand dollars in repairs because if we're buying an older three family, then things are almost certainly going to happen <laughs> uh, in terms of repairs. Now, well, here's where we're going to look at our uh, down payment. So, you know, let, we could do either 5%, 3.5%. You know, you can kind of play around with it. Um, this is So this is the total cash that we're going to have to put out. Um, this is going to be our loan amount. And very simply, now we're going to start looking at the numbers for our mortgage. So, again, this is our total loan amount right here. We're going to look at our interest rate. Again, talk to a lender to get a finer rate for you. But 4.5% um, is probably pretty reasonable as, as of right now. And we're going to have a 30-year mortgage, right? This is just in months. Um, and this is our interest rate per month. Again, this is just uh, ex the way to do to calculate a mortgage payment on Excel. Now, here comes the first tricky part. So this is our income. So this is basically where we're going to have to project what kind of rents we can get for the unit. So the three-family I bought had three units, a four-bedroom, a two-bedroom, and a one-bedroom unit. So I know in Everett that a four bedroom right now can quite easily get about $2,200. Um, it's probably a little bit on the conservative end. Then I know I have a two bedroom that's going to uh, get about $1,800. And then I'm going to assume that I'm going to live in the one bedroom. Now let's make a few clarifications here. First of all, a lot of the older, older properties that you're going to buy, they're likely already going to have tenants in them. So you're just going to want to use the current rents that the property is getting. And then in terms of the th third unit where you're going to live, you know, the, you know, a lot of people like to use this, uh, you know, like to use the uh, house hacking trick in order to buy an investment property and then not even live in it. If you're going to do that, you know, I can't stop you from doing that. Just, you know, just beware of the risks. Um, but we're going to pretend like we're actually going to live in the in the property um, at least for the first year, and then we can kind of see what the numbers look like afterwards. So, and then one other line item is I do other monthly income. You know, if the usually for uh, two to three families, that means if there's a lawn, if there's a on-site laundry machines um, where the tenants pay to you, that could be a uh, you know that could be another source of income. So your total monthly income right now is four thousand dollars for the property. So let's go into operating expenses. So, you know, it, it costs to run an investment property, right? There's obviously going to be expenses um, associated with it. So the first line item that I always use is repairs and maintenance budget. Um, you know, I use about, and this is percent of total gross income, right? So I use about 5%. Um, again, these are just rough rule of thumbs, um, you know, that I've, that I've collected through my extensive research. If you want to be more aggressive or less aggressive, you can obviously do that. 
Um, but this basically accounts for, you know, toilet leaks. Um, you know, you're going to have to call your handyman to fix over a couple of things here and there. Things are just going to add up. And even though you might not spend any money, you might spend zero dollars one month. Then the next month you might spend four hundred dollars. But this is just an average of what you're likely going to spend over the course of the investment. Uh, next, we're going to go into vacancy. This basically is just a budget for us because, as we know, you know units do not are not rented 100 percent of the time. Even if you have a units that are rented a lot, right? When a tenant leaves, you're going to have some sort of period where you're not collecting any money um, from the tenants, right? Because the apartment's sitting vacant. So you want to have a budget for yourself for when that period comes. And again, this is obviously not going to be a monthly expense because hopefully your, your units are 95% of the time occupied. Uh, but when, they, when they're not occupied, when you do have some tenant turnover, you're going to have this budget. Next, you're going to have your water, sewer, and other utility budget. Um, again, this is kind of a rough rule of thumb I use. You know, you can go a more aggressive, less aggressive. Um, but it, I think it's just a, it's a decently fair budget for the greater Boston area to use. Um, note that this does not include um, electric or gas, right? Because what I'm assuming is the two or three family you're going to buy uh, has... Uh, has uh, separate utilities. So that means each tenant will pay their own utility bill. And then finally, I also include a other budget, uh, you know, which I do kind of a small one, but this can include anything, any other surprises you might have accounted for. Um, it can also include things like snow removal if you're not going to do that yourself. Um, but basically, things will pop up with investment property, so you got to be prepared. So let's look at our kind of summary so far. So our total gross income we're going to be making is about $4,000. Our total operating expensive on an average average base is going to be about $620, which leaves us with about, you know, close to $3,400 per month. So now let's look at our monthly mortgage insurance and taxes. So here's our monthly um, mortgage payment. Uh, our insurance is going to be about two, you know, again, these are rough numbers. Um, I use about 0.5% of purchase price for insurance, 1% for taxes. Um, altogether, it's going to be about $3,900. Next, we're going to have a line. Finally, we're going to have a line item, what I call CapEx or capital expenditures. So basically, this is the budget that is for bigger stuff, right? So up here, we put a budget for routine maintenance. Here, this is a budget for bigger stuff that's, again, averaged out on over the life basis. So this will include, you know, this will include a budget for uh, for you to build a reserve budget for things like a roof replacement um, or a new boiler or a new water heater or some electrical upgrades. Basically, big capital items for the property. You want to have you want to start building out a reserve budget. And this right here is going to be exactly that. It's going to help you build out a reserve, um, and be prepared for when you have to write out a big check all at once. So now we can kind of look at our cash flow numbers. So obviously right now we're at a negative, but remember this includes us living in one of the units. So basically what this tells us is we're going to be paying about $560 a month, right, to essentially live in a one-bedroom apartment and own this building. Now, one other thing you should do as you analyze this is, let's say you live, do this for a year. Well, what happens when you move out, right? And you're going to keep the property. Well, hopefully you'll keep the property. Then you can get this one bedroom rented. So let's let's see what happens when we add in, say, an extra $1,300 a month or so. All of a sudden, our cash flow numbers are about 600 bucks a month or about $7,000 a year. And what we can see here um, is our cash summary. And, and what this cash summary is, is basically our down payment, right? This is the cash we put in. This is our down payment plus our closing costs. Plus, remember, we budgeted that $10,000 of repairs. So this is all of the cash that we've extended, about $47,000. And we're supposed to be making, once, once this building is fully rented out, we should be making about $7,000 a year, which is about a 15% return on our cash invested, which is pretty damn good. <laughs> um, so again, so hopefully this this is kind of a simplified version um, of what it takes to run numbers for an investment property. But, you know, use it once you get good at it, you know, all you really have to play around with is typically going to be your price, 
repairs, your income. The rest, the rest of these line items stay relatively the same, right? I mean, you know, you can always play around and get better or fine tune numbers. Um, and you can see, well, what if I go conservative aggressive? But this is the way of kind of running numbers where you can, you know, where you get a really good feel of the financial performance of a property, um, you know, that, that you're analyzing. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Uh, comment or uh, leave any comments or questions in the comments below.